Did you know that the elusive Hawking radiation theorized by Stephen Hawking has never been seen? Until now, scientists have recreated a DIY black hole on Earth, and the results are astounding. Join us as we unravel the secrets of this cosmic phenomenon. Look at this funky orange donut. It's one of the few photos of a black hole that we humans possess. The first version of this image was released in 2019, and it took scientists some time to tweak it so it looks a bit sharper. Now, it has a dark center and an orange rim. We don't exactly know what black holes look like. They're something we can't directly observe, but we can infer their presence and study them. Sorta. Black holes are like the ultimate vacuum cleaners of the universe, and even if someone ventured into the great unknown to study them, we would never know the result. The scientists just wouldn't make it back. People have long believed that the only thing black holes can do is to devour. But back in 1974, Stephen Hawking said that black holes aren't just empty voids sucking up everything in their path. Black holes can shoot out some light of their own. This phenomenon was later named Hawking radiation. But nobody had ever actually seen this mysterious radiation in real life, so it remained a theory. It was impossible to prove it by looking through a telescope. The simplest way to see and study a black hole is to replicate it in a lab and look at it right there. You may instantly think of the Large Hadron Collider, that famous particle accelerator. Technically, if we accelerate the particles and smash them into each other, we might have a black hole in the end. Currently, the LHC is nowhere near reaching the required energy to create an actual black hole. But scientists found a different way to simulate black holes on Earth. Their goal was to understand how we see the Hawking radiation waves fall in and come out. They realized those waves are pretty slight. Plus, it's virtually impossible to see them from a real black hole. The thing is, Hawking radiation might be simply overpowered by other radiation sources. But it's impossible to avoid these complications using a domesticated man-made black hole. It may sound like they aim to create microcosmos in a lab, but of course, the replica was not intended to be the same as the original black hole. For example, the DIY black hole lacks a signature spaghettification feature. Also, while real black holes are all about light waves, scientists on Earth had to make do with sound waves. In space, nothing, not even light, can escape it if it crosses the event horizon. Things work pretty much the same with the DIY black hole, but in this case, no sonic vibrations can escape once they cross the boundary. This black hole analog was more like a tube rather than those swirling things you see in NASA pics. The scientists were just curious to see if one of those quantum entangled particles that got close to the event horizon would escape as Hawking predicted. You see, quantum entanglement means that two particles act the same, no matter where they are in time and space. Creating a black hole from scratch seems to be a pretty complicated adventure. It might seem that such an experiment needs some intricate ingredients, like California and other fancy recently discovered elements chilling at the very end of the periodic table. But the black hole the researchers created in the lab was made of rubidium gas. Rubidium gas is faster than sound itself. It's so quick that it puts a stop to any sound waves trying to break free, just like how a black hole's crazy gravity does in space. While experimenting, scientists use lasers to hold atoms in place and make them act like one big atom. With another laser beam, they made this gas flow like a waterfall, creating a sort of event horizon. Rubidium is a pretty humble element number from the periodic table. It's number 37, and you can find it between krypton and strontium. Even though rubidium is the 16th most abundant element in the Earth's crust, it's still relatively rare. You probably even saw it with your eyes. Rubidium compounds are sometimes used in fireworks to give them a red-violet color. It's classified as an alkali metal, which means it can be dissolved in water, just like instant coffee. Also, it has a relatively low melting point, just slightly higher than body temperature. Collectively, all the atoms in a DIY black hole weigh about a thousandth of a single bacterium. It's made up of about 8,000 rubidium gas atoms and is only about 0.1 millimeters long. A grain of sugar, for instance, has at least a billion of atoms. Just so you know, rubidium costs about $36 per gram. So the raw material for this DIY project didn't cost a pretty penny. 
The whole experiment was constantly recorded on camera. Because the camera can instantly destroy the analog black hole when capturing it, scientists had to keep recreating the analog entity over and over again. They did that experiment 97,000 times. That's over 124 days of non-stop work. It paid off. The photos proved that Hawking radiation always stays the same. The team had to gather a ton of data to see how these sound waves behave together. And those waves did the same thing every single time, just like Hawking said. So, this experiment proved him right. But here's the thing. Until we can figure out a way to study black holes in space using a super-advanced telescope that we can't even imagine yet, we'll have to rely on theoretical studies like Hawking's to determine if this happens in real black holes. Okay, you're not a scientist, but you still want to create a black hole replica. No problem! You're going to need some stretchy fabric. A t-shirt with lycra will do, an apple, and two ping-pong balls. Make sure to invite two friends, as you won't perform it alone. Put a ping pong ball somewhere on the fabric and just watch what happens. Now, roll it across the fabric and check out how it moves. Make sure those volunteers of yours pull the fabric tight enough so there are no wrinkles or bumps. Smooth it out as much as possible. Now take that ping pong ball and place it near the edge of the fabric. Let it go and see what goes down. If you lay the fabric flat and put a ball on it, it stays put. But if you roll it across the fabric, it goes in a straight line. The fabric represents space-time. When there's no big mass on the fabric, it doesn't curve at all. That's why the ball can just chill or move straight when you roll it. It's like how light travels through space when there are no black holes around. But now, let's say you plop an apple in the middle of the fabric. That causes the fabric to curve downward. Just like a big mass, like a planet, star, or black hole curves space-time, creating a gravity well. Now, it's almost impossible to keep the ping-pong ball still. It always rolls towards the middle, and when you try to roll it in a straight line, it follows a curved path. As long as it doesn't get too close to the middle, you could probably still roll it from one end of the fabric to the other. Kinda like how light curves when it passes near a black hole but doesn't go inside the event horizon. But if it gets too close to the center, the ball gets sucked in and can't escape, just like light can't escape if it ends up inside a black hole's event horizon. Now, if you rolled two balls at once, you might have noticed that they didn't affect each other's movement as long as they didn't crash into each other. That's because the balls don't have enough mass to make any extra curves in the fabric. All the curving is caused by the much heavier apple in the middle. This shows why we only feel Earth's gravity pulling us down and not sideways by other things like people, cars, or buildings. Their gravity is way weaker compared to Earth's. Somewhere deep underground in super-secret laboratories, scientists are trying to create a black hole. It looks like the latest experiment was a success. The black hole hovers above the desk for a moment, but then, in a split second, it swallows it whole. Uh-oh. After its meal, the black hole grows until it is out of control. Microscopes and test tubes fly into the dark void. Soon everything in the room has been consumed. Each time it eats, it grows bigger and bigger and attracts even larger objects. On the surface, people go about their day as usual. Some joggers stop their run when they see a giant black sphere growing in the distance. Houses are torn from their foundations, and cars fly through the air towards the black abyss. In just a few minutes, the black hole has enveloped our entire planet. Then it grows big enough to consume the Moon and Mars. The black hole is now heavier than anything in our solar system. All of the planets begin to circle it, before becoming food for the monster. Finally, even the sun is extinguished in the belly of the beast. Well, that was pretty bleak. Eh, don't worry. This isn't how the scenario would play out in real life. Our scientists may actually be capable of creating a black hole, but it's far safer than this. The effort to make a black hole is led by the scientists working in Geneva on something called the Large Hadron Collider. This machine basically makes particles move at high speeds until they collide. 
When this happens, they release a lot of energy and create a lot of interesting effects. Scientists think that energy released by these collisions might be enough to create a black hole. Some people were so worried by this that they even tried to ban the construction of the Large Hadron Collider. Luckily, if a black hole did appear, it would be so small that it wouldn't be able to do anything. Black holes actually produce a lot of energy and release it, often as heat like a furnace. That means that they will fade away when they run out of fuel. If one appeared in the experiment, it would instantly burn out and disappear in a billionth of a second. Even if a stable microscopic black hole was created, it would grow so slowly that nothing would happen. Assuming that it survived long enough to absorb the tiny particles around it, a black hole of this size would take about half a trillion years to gain a pound of weight. Black holes could actually be really useful. One with the mass of Mount Everest would emit enough energy to completely power humanity. Even better, black holes are so dense that the one this big would only take up a tiny bit of space. We couldn't create anything as enormous as the naturally occurring black holes, though. Some can weigh hundreds of thousands of times as much as our sun. Recently, scientists have observed a real black hole feast. The sight of a black hole tearing an enormous star apart is one of the most mesmerizing sights in the universe. Heavier and more destructive than anything else in existence, the black hole is both amazing and terrifying. And black holes aren't actually black at all. They're so massive that even light can't escape their pool, meaning that they're actually invisible. Scientists can only find them with special instruments. Most natural black holes are born as stars reach the end of their lifespan. You can picture healthy stars as giant furnaces that burn hydrogen and give off unbelievable amounts of energy. Every second, stars like our Sun produce more energy than humanity has ever produced, which pushes outwards and makes it want to expand. This is what eventually finds its way to Earth as the heat that birthed life on our planet. The only thing stopping this expansion is gravity, a force that basically just pulls objects toward something heavy. Most people know gravity is something that keeps us planted to the ground and stops us from flying off into space. The force of gravity of a star is so strong on stars that it makes them want to implode in on themselves. So, when a star is healthy, the force of gravity pushes inwards, and the energy it releases tries to inflate it like a balloon. These forces mostly cancel each other out and stop it from doing much at all. When a star burns through its fuel, though, nothing is pushing outwards to stop it from collapsing in on itself. Some really big stars make so much energy that they gradually expand into something called a red giant. When they run out of fuel, they cool, and gravity pushes the enormous object into a tiny space. Scientists use our sun to measure how big things in space are. Our sun weighs one solar mass. If a light star like our sun implodes, not much happens, which is lucky if you've ever worried about being swallowed up into a black hole. If a red giant around 10 solar masses implodes, though, some incredible things can happen. The collapse of one of these is so intense that it explodes into a supernova, releasing a light as bright as the entire galaxy. Stars that are massive enough to produce supernovas sometimes become black holes. Their weight causes gravity to push down and compact them until they collapse into a black hole in less than a second. The inside of a black hole is mysterious and unexplored, for obvious reasons. One thing we do know is that they're so massive that they can even distort time. One second near the black disk can be equal to weeks or even months on Earth, depending on its size. In 2019, scientists watched a black hole devour a star the size of our Sun. Even though it was 860,000 miles wide, the star was completely trapped in the black hole's gravitational field. For a while, they danced around each other, gradually coming closer and closer. Eventually, though, the star was extinguished in the invisible mouth of the black hole. The black hole sometimes releases beams of energy into space. Sizzling plasma flies out at 6,200 miles per second as the black hole finishes destroying the star. 
about half of the star's mass is consumed, while the rest is ejected into space. Incredibly, these insatiable titans even consume other black holes when they get big enough. The collision of two black holes was recently witnessed by scientists when one, weighing in at 85 solar masses, met another that was 66 solar masses. When black holes interact, the bigger one always swallows the smaller, adding even more mass to itself. The resulting black hole here reached 142 solar masses big. It's hard to believe, but this is still very small for a black hole. It will continue to consume everything around it and might even reach the size of a supermassive black hole at some point. These are unbelievably big and destructive. Our entire galaxy, the Milky Way, rotates around the gravitational field of one of these supermassive black holes. This monster weighs around 4 million solar masses or more than a trillion times our planet. And that isn't even the biggest they get. It's also theorized that black holes can be made without a dramatic explosion. Big gas clouds that weigh hundreds of thousands of solar masses could condense under the force of their gravity to make a star. This object would already be so heavy that it would continue to compact until it became a black hole, skipping the supernova stage. Supermassive black holes are so far away and hard to observe that scientists doesn't have a full understanding of them yet. We don't know much about what happens inside a black hole, leading to a lot of speculation. For decades, people have theorized about how we could use black holes. Knowing that black holes distort time means that someone could use it to travel to the future with the right technology. If it was possible to build a ship strong enough to withstand the powerful gravitational fields, it would be simple. All they would need to do is decide how far they want to go and fly around the outside of the black hole. In the few minutes or hours they spent near the time warp, years could have passed back on Earth. They could be thousands of years old without having aged at all physically. Wow, that's officially a mind blower. Now really, an object weighing billions of times the mass of our sun must be easy to find, right? wrong. Unfortunately, it might not be that simple, like in the case with a missing black hole. But let's travel to the galaxy cluster Abel 2261, hosting a supermassive black hole at its center. Or at least, that's where it's supposed to be. The main problem is this giant space phenomenon is nowhere to be found. Now, supermassive black holes are mega monsters, churning slowly at the center of their home galaxies. They gather tremendous clouds of gas and dust around them, which makes them swell up to sizes the human mind can't begin to imagine. If a supermassive black hole, like the one that dwells at the center of our home Milky Way galaxy, moved even a little bit closer to our solar system, we'd be doomed. The distance between this huge thing and Earth could be several dozens of light years, and still, it would wreak havoc on our planet. Earth, along with other things making up the solar system, would be tugged into the black hole's orbit and doomed to spin around it for eternity or longer. Hey, who knows, right? So it's good that such black holes stay away from us at the moment. So let's see what happened to that runaway supermassive black hole from that gigantic cluster of galaxies around 2.7 billion years away from our planet. Scientists have been looking for it with the help of NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory and Hubble Space Telescope. But so far, no result. The main problem with finding a black hole is that it's, uh, well, black. And space is, you guessed it, black too. So there's no contrast whatsoever that could help astronomers spot the hole. But scientists haven't given up yet. After all, they have a lot of other technologies to find black holes, small and big, in the vastness of space. Some of these methods involve watching the stars orbiting black holes. Sometimes, it's a fake gravitational wave signal, which is produced when two black holes collide. But the most reliable technique is watching dust and gas falling to their doom. The thing is, black holes are space objects with insane gravity. So, regions of space surrounding them are usually a bit chaotic, gas and dust getting pulled into the bottomless abyss, compressing and heating up. In the process, it releases a flood of X-ray radiation, 
So, astronomers look for extremely bright X-ray sources in the universe. Chances are, those are the last gasps of giant clumps of material before they disappear into a black hole. Then, why can't scientists find such X-ray signatures left by the black hole in Abel 2261? One of the most mysterious things about its disappearance is that radio telescopes have spotted some signs of massive plumes of superheated material launched at one point within the last 50 million years. These plumes were most likely caused by a large black hole, which is nowhere to be found these days. So, at the moment, we can only play a guessing game. Maybe two medium-sized black holes collided, pushing the newly merged giant out of the center of the galaxy. The observations of the stars in that galaxy have shown a clump of dense material a few thousand light-years away from the galaxy's core. Maybe it's the runaway black hole. But disappointingly, no X-ray signals are coming from that clump. Or the hole might still be there in its rightful place. But it's, you know, slumbering. If it doesn't get a fresh supply of gas and dust, it has nothing to feed on. As a result, it can't release a flood of X-rays. But again, the answer, do not disturb, the black hole is sleeping now, isn't very satisfying. Why isn't it getting its space food? What happened 50 million years ago? What is that clump of material speeding away from the galaxy center? So many questions, and no answers so far. At least, we know what black holes look like. Well, kinda. It's actually the shadow of a black hole's event horizon, visible against the glowing superheated material falling inside the hole. The first ever mugshot of a black hole appeared in 2019. But the data for its creation was collected in 2017. It took an international team, consisting of more than 200 astronomers, two years to assemble the image. We can admire this amazing space phenomenon thanks to a vast global network of telescopes called the Event Horizon Telescope Collaboration, or simply EHT. Why such a name? The thing is that the event horizon is a point of no return on the outskirts of a black hole. When something, for example, matter, radiation, or light, reaches this boundary, there is no way for it to escape the black hole's clutches. Anyway, to capture that very first image of a black hole, scientists created a virtual telescope that turned out as big as our planet by combining the power of eight powerful radio telescopes. But it wasn't an easy feat the researchers had to simultaneously point the telescopes in a meticulously planned order with the help of precise atomic clocks set on each telescope. Plus, to keep the chances of rain and bad weather to a minimum, they even constructed the telescopes in super dry regions, such as the Atacama Desert in Chile and the South Pole. On each observation day, the telescope gathers roughly 350 terabytes of data. That's 10 times the amount of data collected every day at the Large Hadron Collider. But let's speak more about black holes themselves. There are stellar black holes, smaller but even more dangerous than their supermassive peers. They appear when stars that have run out of their star food fall into themselves. If a star used to be big enough, it keeps compressing and compressing some more, and voila! A baby stellar black hole is born. But even if I call such a hole a small one, it's still five to several tens of times heavier than the sun. Unlike their massive siblings, hypothetical mini black holes could be really tiny, not bigger than an atom. Even so, just one minuscule thing would have the mass of a thousand SUVs. One theory claims tons of micro black holes could have been created right after the Big Bang and the beginning of the universe. Some scientists even go as far as to say that a couple mini black holes pass through our planet every day. There is a supermassive black hole smack dab in the middle of our galaxy, the Milky Way. Its name is Sagittarius A star, and it's 4.3 million times as heavy as the Sun. And nope, we aren't going to be pulled into this hole. It's more than 26,000 light years from Earth, too far to have any influence on our planet. By the way, recently, astronomers have discovered that this supermassive black hole might be leaking. If it's true, it probably means that Sagittarius A star isn't a sleeping giant, as previously thought. It might still be active. And the leakage recorded by scientists may be the hole hiccuping while swallowing clouds of gas. 
Maybe we should burp this baby? If you ever find yourself near a black hole, hmm, get ready that time will significantly slow down. It may work for you if you aren't eager to grow older. Just don't let yourself be tugged beyond the point of no return. Another danger of hanging around a black hole is that it might start behaving like a massive galactic volcano. From time to time, black holes flare up. But instead of spewing lava, they produce enormous amounts of energy, and it makes gaping holes in the surrounding material and gas. A short time ago, scientists discovered one of the largest craters in the universe. Radio and X-ray telescopes detected a supermassive black hole that threw a temper tantrum many, many years ago. It happened in a galaxy cluster about 390 million light-years away from Earth. The crater left behind which was actually a hole punched in the cluster's hot gas, could fit 15 Milky Way galaxies. Okay, mind blown, I'm out of here.